Hi there, and here we are about to paint a watercolour scallop shell. It's one of my favourite things to paint. They're so beautiful, they're iconic, they pop up on everything, so I think you'd probably be interested to learn how to do one. Um, today we're also going to look at um, watercolour blending and gradation techniques, still just using a single colour. So it's going to be really simple if colour is something you're a little bit scared of. I know I was when I started out. So grab your paint and paper and your water and let's get going. Right, here we go, time for the scallop shell. So I've got my two brushes that I used in the previous C series, um, section where we did the starfish and the shell, size two and four tenths, rounded points. And again, I need to do a little bit of prep. So I'm gonna draw first a little baseline and then I love my set square, by the way. I use this more than I use a ruler. And then I want a sort of T coming up the middle. That'll do. Lovely. Move that off. Okay, so we're going to do a scallop shell today. And again, I'm going to start by doing a, a basic structure that then we can be nice and creative from. So with my pencil, I'm just going to draw this curve it doesn't have to be a dash, it just seems like um, that's the style of painting I seem to be doing, style of drawing. Yeah, that's quite nice. Something like that, good, good, good. And then if we bring this line down a bit, we're gonna bring this in to the middle. It's just a very faint guide for us. Lovely. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw in my central section of the scallop shell and then the following lines. And you see there's just a slight curve, isn't there, coming into the middle. And I'm just sort of doing it by eye but because I have thought about the structure of it beforehand, it's just helping me. And then I'm just going to do a little bit like that. It makes me want to make that just a little bit, a little bit of a deeper point. And then as before, I'm going to rub this all out with my putty rubber because I really don't want too much pencil. So I'm just very lightly rubbing this. But there's enough there so I can see what I'm doing. And then the only other thing I want to do is create this ridge essentially that we you get on a scallop shell. So just by preparing and actually let's just do let's do another little bit underneath because I think that'll be fun. So that comes in and that comes in as well. See that's the thing, at this point when you're drawing it all out, you can play around with the shape a little bit. Nice, I like that. See, you're seeing everything, you're seeing everything. I just decided to do that f just for this filming. I didn't do that in my rehearsal. Yes, I do rehearse. Okay, so today I'm gonna paint this in Prussian blue, one of my favorite colors. Um, Prussian blue we think of as a very dark, intense blue, but actually it can be beautiful and bright and light. And today I'm going to do my scallop shell with a graded blend, which I'm really excited to show you today. So let's make a start. Let's start with our central, uh, our central section of the shell. So a little bit like how I was painting my seashell in the previous episode. Um, and if you haven't seen that, you should just go and check that out because this is one of what will be three videos based on seashells. 
Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a little bit more strong colour. I'm just going to send that up the middle. Not too much, just a little bit. Okay, I'll go on. Let's just have a tiny bit more concentrated colour. Oh, look at that, lovely. And that's because there was lots of water there. Okay, so now I'm going to paint the next shell. So it's getting a little bit of blue. A little bit more blue and because this is going to touch there we're going to get a tiny bit of a blend from there but I also want to add a little bit of my own so and that just helps everyone sort of keep nice and consistent in the sections that I've painted so then I'm going to come across here fill in the scallop shell blue Prussian blue so yeah Prussian blue we think of it as really dark, but actually beautiful sort of nautical blue colour here. And then dabbing at the base. Now, it's an important thing to say that when you have got enough water on your page, you don't need um, to sort of do too much with the brush to send colour up. A blend like that. Do you see all I did was dab it because there was enough water. Right here we go, nice and blue and then we'll pop in a bit of colour. It's in the base there and it's dabbed in and off it travels. Off it goes. And then the last one, being careful not to smudge. I mean if you're a sensible person you would have started with this one while well, as a left-handed person. If you're left-handed and sensible you would have started with this one so then your hand wouldn't run any risk of smudging the others. And then the last bit of Prussian blue and sending that up there. And I'm just going to even out my shape there. And then of course, my cheeky little extra ones. In fact, I just want to open out that shape a little fraction more. There we go, make that come down a little bit further. See, when things are still wet, they're nice and malleable, so you can work with them nice and easily. So yeah, we're going to just fill in this bottom line here that's just sort of almost coming from underneath. There it goes, and then the one over here, which to be honest from my pencil drawing is not all that clear, but... Lovely, happy with that, and then a little bit of colour. Dab, dab, dab. Lovely, really happy with that, I think that's really pretty. So um, for the next sections we're going to paint, we need these ones to be nice and dry. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this to one side for a minute and I'm just going to revisit the shells that I painted for you in my previous session. This is like a little sort of DVD extras, I suppose. Um, and I just wanted to rub out the pencil on here to show you exactly sort of how light you really must draw any pencil that you're going to put underneath a watercolour painting because even then that's rubbed out quite nicely but you can still always see the tiniest bit. Um, this putty rubber is my absolute favourite thing. This uh, brand is Faber-Castell. Um, a kneadable art razor, eraser is what they call it, I call it putty rubber and the good thing about it is you, you can sort of um, really play around with it, it's very malleable um, and so if you rub out a bit and there's a little bit of a mark on it you can just sort of fold it over and come back it, from it again. But yeah I just wanted to show you that sort of rubbing out watercolour, um, rubbing out pencil once watercolour has gone over it is not impossible but it, it's never 100% perfect so I really encourage you to try and draw as lightly as possible. The pencil I use is always HB. This is just a, a sort of fairly old chewed pencil I had. 
but yeah, I just like a nice standard HB pencil and a really, really good rubber. Okay, so we'll say goodbye to our starfish and um, what do we call these? Anyone in the comments know? Anyway, so um, these were on a previous episode, so you can look back through the back catalogue for that. And let's come back to our lovely scallop shell, which is looking nice and dry now. So I'm going to continue with this gradient. What I want to do now is I want to reverse the, the colour blend on these unpainted bits. So we're going to do pale colour and then drop lots of colour in from the top. So here we go, we've got my nice dilute Prussian blue colour and my larger brush and I'm going to start by filling it in. And because the paint is nice and dry now, it's not getting all upset and disturbed and bleeding in. This is amazing, just goes to show you when you paint on a hot day, you can get your work done really nice and quickly. Okay, so got wet colour and then at the top, I'm just gonna sort of leave it there because what I want to do, instead of we're just pulsing, this time we're actually doing a bit of work, we're shaping and I want to make sure that the shape is how I want it to be. There we go. It's going to get a little bit more, build it up a bit more in intensity. Lovely. It's so tempting to really like poke about with that colour, but please try not to, and you will be rewarded for your with um, for your willpower. Right colour in again, try just go up to the lines and try not to disturb that other colour because you know when there is more pigment there like down the bottom it's much more easily disturbed. Okay and so I've got some colour on my brush here and I'm just going to carefully create that shape there that I want, make sure that it's making a connection with the wet paint and then I'm going to go back in with a lot more paint on my brush and get more of that graded blend that I'm looking for. Lovely. Okay. Let's go for the next one. We don't want pools of standing water, but we, we want a considerably wet surface to make sure that the paint does do a fun and sort of energetic blend down this section. Is that energetic enough for me? Yes, I think it is, but I can just see a little bit of space that wasn't painted. There we go. So tempting to mess about with it. Just about got away with it there. Okay, here we go. Another one in here. And this is all using the one colour. I really love singular colour exercises because it just shows you, you really don't need to buy every colour out there or use every colour out there if you, if you just so happen to be lucky enough to have all the colours at your fingertips. Just, just play around with one colour for a start. I also think this is a really good way of getting used to colour when, when you don't really enjoy using lots of colour. I know a lot of people get really quite anxious about um, inadvertent commas ruining their pieces with too much colour. Trust me, if you if you play it sort of play it safe and just go in with a bit of caution, you'll be absolutely fine. There'll be no ruining of paintings going on here. Right, last one. How lovely. And then we've got the matter of this sort of bit at the bottom. So what I'm going to do so I'm going to do it like the rest of the ones I've just painted. So we'll do a faint blue. And then I'm going to do an outward edge with it. 
but because it's a very small section we just need to give it a moment whilst we allow it to seep in a tiny bit so I'm just going to come over here and tidy that up and tidy that up lovely clean my brush off okay do we think it's dried up enough yeah let's get some blue not too wet just nice and concentrated and I'm just going to yeah paint the outline which is probably going to fill up that shape but hey ho that's not too bad lovely okay so we're just going to let that dry and then I will just rub out the pencil and we'll have a look at it right that paint has all dried so let's start rubbing out the pencil and see what we've got so the best way of rubbing out pencil is to do it lightly and just keep going but I'm really pleased with that there we are so there is your scallop shell all done with lovely graded color using the sections to allowing them to dry first and um, yeah just using a single color so thanks for watching the scallop shell little tutorial there um, I really hope you enjoyed it and of course if you did enjoy it please hit the like button and tell me uh, how you're getting on in the comments section. We've got quite a few videos under our belt now, so I'd love to see how you're getting on. And also hit the subscribe button if you are keen to catch up with everything we're gonna have coming up in the next few months. Okay, thanks, bye.